Das nice than the guest you've been held. Snails for snails and talk me or ever that you sit by your snails for the end of a sitting with love and oil. Starting off the news this week is some massive anthropology news. In a new paper published this week in the journal Science Advances, researchers have revealed evidence of a molar tooth from Homo sapiens dating back to between 56,800 and 51,700 years ago, making it the oldest evidence for Homo sapiens in Western Europe. This is of course massive news and has big implications for our understanding of the migration of Homo sapiens and our understanding of how, where and when these modern humans interacted with other human species, as this proposed date would set them to be around Europe around the same time as Neanderthals. Possible evidence of early modern humans has been found in Greece dating back to around 210,000 years ago, but this molar is more certain to be from Homo sapiens, and has also been found in southern France, so much further away from their origin point in Africa. Previously, the earliest confirmed presence in Europe dated back to earliest 45,000 years ago, so this could be around a 10,000 year difference in when Homo sapiens were present in Europe. In other news, I just want to quickly mention the story that's been circulating this week about the SpaceX rocket debris that is on course to hit the moon. It's not SpaceX rocket debris, it actually seems to be part of a Chinese rocket. More importantly however, I just want to clarify that the moon isn't going to be particularly affected by this comparatively tiny human creation hitting it, because it is the moon and the moon is quite big. And now over to Ben with the weather. Thanks Doug. Also in this week's news is a fascinating new paper that records the first instance of a respiratory infection like those that occur in birds in a non-bird dinosaur. The dinosaur in question is a diplodocine sauropod from the Morrison formation and displays irregular bony structures in its neck vertebrae that appear to stem from the pneumatic features, that is the air spaces, in these bones. The paper explains how since sauropods are known to have a respiratory system that extends into the bones of the body, as birds do, they are considered to have an avian style form of respiration. Therefore, these irregular structures make most sense if they came from a respiratory disease, such as air sacculitis, an inflammatory disease of air sacs resulting from microbes, that then caused a swelling in the neck bones. This is therefore the first ever instance of this disease being found in the fossil record, and enables paleontologists to get a better idea about some of the medical conditions that affected the dinosaurs of the Mesozoic. Up next is the absolutely astonishing publication of a crocodiliform fossil found with the remains of a dinosaur inside its abdomen. Coming from the late Cretaceous of Australia, the crocodiliform is itself named as an entirely new genus and species, Confractosuchus soroctonus and is known from a skull with a partially articulated body lacking the tail and hind limbs. The fossil is actually contained within a concretion, and so tomography scans were used in order to see the bones hidden by the matrix. Within the abdomen of the specimen, the bones representing parts of a juvenile ornithopod dinosaur were found, indicating that Confractosuchus fed on dinosaurs, being classified as a macrogeneralist, meaning it would feed on any big-bodied prey. The ornithopod, which was actually also realised to be a new species but remains unnamed for now, shows evidence of having been processed in the mouth, as well as being dismembered and having fragmented bones, all of which is said to be indicative of feeding methods employed by modern crocodilians. So an absolutely fantastic discovery of two new species, as well as a unique insight into the ecosystems of Lake Cretaceous Australia. And finally for this week we have another newly named dinosaur. Welcome Guamicia Okoya. I probably said that really badly, but it's an abelisaurid from Argentina. This is actually the first definitive occurrence of an abelisaurid from northwestern Argentina, with most other records of these animals coming from Patagonia. The material known for this taxon is an almost complete brain case, and it actually represents one of the smallest abelisaurs now known to science. Additionally, it extends the known geographical distribution of this group at this time in the late Cretaceous, making this another significant discovery. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. Well, that's it for 7 Days of Science this week. I do hope you enjoyed, and as always, we'll see you on Monday.